Well, guess what? Hellish Court officially came out yesterday, and we're gonna try it out. Blargity is helping me out here. We're just gonna do a few duels and check out the new characters, of course. So we got Sass Lady over here, Marie with the rapier, and then we got Isabella with the longsword. So I'm just gonna start out with longsword. And uh, they also got new arenas. So we'll see how that goes. It's quite a pretty background. It's like kind of absurdly idyllic. <laughs> but there will be bloodshed. Okay. Can't hit what you can't see. Oh no. <laughs> the flash has arrived. <laughs> that was a lot of blood for a touch. Holy shit. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's a proper thwart cut right there. Yep. Synchronized fighting. Oh yeah, there's a shield how. That's pretty good. <laughs> what? what? I'm not I literally sure how that did connected, nothing. but I literally did nothing. <laughs> Did you just run, run yourself through on my blade? I guess. Is it a lightsaber or something? Because I saw no rotation there. Okay, well. Let's see. Of course, positioning is really important with this. If I, if I can get on his side, I, I have a much better chance of actually landing a cut, but... Problem is, in the process of sidestepping, they don't defend. Normally, if you don't do anything, if you don't move, they auto-defend. So if I just stand here and don't do anything, she should defend against anything other than the hand-to-hand the -hand close quarter attack. Like that. That breaks the guard, but otherwise, she does defend. It's very particular about if your swords are in the right position. Yeah. In real life, you just... Put it in the right position, but you have to kind of see if they already are or something. Yeah, the, the problem here, of course, is like I definitely appreciate the complexity in simulating the blade interaction and all that. The only problem, of course, is with the controller, you don't get the information that you get in real life. You don't feel anything. You don't feel the bind, and it's kind of makes it a little bit difficult. But at the same time, you know, they do defend by themselves, so you don't have to worry about that. It's basically a matter of the correct timing, the right angle, and choosing the right attack. You know, <laughs> like most fighting games, but the dynamics here are quite a bit different. Because, for one, there's no health, so... Minor cuts will not really do much of anything. They, they draw blood, but they don't seem to really affect them negatively. Um, powerful cuts ended immediately. It's kind of strange how few downward cuts there seem to be. I mean, here's one. Uh, then we've got... Uh, we've got this. And this. And that seems to be about it. Hmm. <laughs> there goes the hand. Wait, how did you, what? How did I get hit? I don't know. Pretty sure an arm cut would leave me ahead of a hand off. You'd think. Okay. Yeah, it's... I think unless you have a lot of experience with the game, I don't think you'll be able to really intercept cuts with any kind of regularity because this is it's so hard to time it correctly. I think you're generally, at least in the beginning, better off just defending and then countering. Should we keep trying or you know? <laughs> yeah, we can continue this round and then maybe go to rapier. 
Okay. Okay, I'm not sure how that even hit you. But it did. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Sidestepping and then doing a downward cut. That I would expect that to hit unless the opponent adjusts. Okay, that seems to work pretty well. And then there is one that seems to be a little bit OP, which is holding the sword out and pressing Y. That just jams it directly into their neck or face, and uh, it doesn't seem like you can very easily defend against that. At least we haven't figured out how yet. Okay, no, no, you did manage this time. But that's a tricky one, apparently. <laughs> they stab each other. What? <laughs> Your head just fell off, just by itself. <laughs> <laughs>Okay, so Rapier is pretty neat. I definitely recognize the stance overall. So we got... Uh -huh, there's a lunge. Then we've got cuts, which have to be... <laughs> we ran right into that one. Which, with the Rapier, of course, have to be very... My jab was done, and then you moved into it and died. Right. So, hits are a bit jank. So I like yeah. the way <clears throat> the way the the rapier is used with wide sweeping cuts. That makes a lot of sense because that's pretty much what you need for such a narrow light blade. So, except this, I don't know what what the hell this is supposed to be. I think this is just to knock the blade aside. I'm assuming because this is not How really much of a cut. Now? I don't okay. remember how to do that one. Um, and I like this one that she does, which she sidesteps and cuts at the same time. We've got the incortata here, which is uh, the sidestep with a thrust. So you're evading a straight thrust and getting a better angle. So that's neat. Definitely recognize those techniques. I think they did a better job with the rapier animations than with the longsword, interestingly. I noticed that the hands seem a lot less jank on this yeah. one. In the longsword, she was clipping into her own hands and... I think that's just a problem. wrist angles. Yeah, I think it's just a problem of having two hands on the same object. That creates some issues. Here, the two hands don't really interact so it's not as janky <laughs> that was interesting she has so much sass the way she's just Afterwards, like, well, what did you expect, bitch? That's what you get. <laughs> Mess with the rapier, you get stabbed. Oh, that was brutal. Oh, nice. Not the same kind of dynamic that you normally have with rapier, where a lot happens from the bind. Um, it's just a little difficult to, to really do here, because in order to do rapier techniques from the bind, you need to be able to feel the blade. You need to be able to uh, tell where the pressure is going. You need to be able to push it over to the side. Those are all things that you really can't do here. Right. But considering the limitations of simulating sword fighting, I think they did quite a good job with that. 
I have to say, overall, I actually prefer the rapier over the longsword, which I really didn't expect. Definitely like how that works. So angle, I said, is quite important here. Like, uh, if you stand, don't do anything. So, depending on how we're aligned, and you can tell that they actually try to disengage and gain on the opponent's blade. In fact, that's what they keep doing if you don't do anything. Which makes a lot of sense, because you want... You want your opponent's sword to be on the outside, basically. You want to dominate the inside line, so you can just thrust and have the opponent's blade on the outside where they can threaten you, where if they were to thrust or lunge, their point would go past you because it's already offline. It's already away from the center. So that is pretty neat. So this is one of those things where you, if you get good at the game, you can do a lot of shenanigans, I bet. Or with, right, with proper positioning, you can really gain an advantage. So that seems to work very well with the rapiers. Longsword versus rapier. It seems like the rapier can't defend against everything, which, you know, makes sense. Because it's not terribly easy to defend against the longsword with a rapier. I've tried that in sparring before and... Yeah, I mean, you can if you hit it on the strong of the blade. Or, I mean, catch it if you pair it on the strong of the blade, but... There's just the two hands can do a lot to just power through. Now, that one she did, she did get. Huh. I'm not sure what changed there. I don't think The really... hand was moving more and more to the middle for me. Right. The first one left. Oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry. Uh... I wanted to keep trying that. Hmm. All right. Now, I guess you just power through it. That's, ex that's all that happened. Yeah, so... Okay, that's We're, a different yeah, angle. Yeah, with a long sword, it, she would have blocked that. So that she can catch because it's on the strong of the rapier. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what determines whether she defends against it or not. Um, Try a, uh, on your left strike. On my left... Um, Okay. Since her rapier was low, the high strike got her in the head. But the question is, what? how can you defend against that? Because you can't actively block. They do that automatically if you don't move. Right. So the question is, what keeps you safe against this? Nothing, it seems. Uh, not picking rapier, I guess. <laughs> not picking rapier, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so this she does defend against. Hmm. Sometimes it's just timing. If, you know, pretty much at the same time that the opponent starts, you already are halfway through a cut, then you'll probably get it. I'm not sure what happened there. Oh. Come on, don't hit her in the sword. <laughs> oh. This is actually kind of <laughs> appropriate that there's a lot of doubles because that's sort of the problem of longsword versus rapier. It's extremely dangerous for both. Because both are can very easily be injured. You know, the rapier can thrust at any time, which is really hard to see and defend against. And the, the longsword can just sometimes just blow straight through the defense and just cut you anyway. So, yeah, that's actually kind of appropriate. Oh, yeah, that got punished for the attempted throw. I really like her grapple, though. There we go. That's nice. I'm pretty sure I've practiced that exact grapple before in rapier class. So it's pretty mm. neat to see. 
Yeah, sometimes you can get like little, little rapier thrusts off. Yeah, but that's just not deep enough to kill. It will not kill. Oh, yeah, that attempt at Encortata was brutally punished. Purely uh, skill-based, of course, 100% intentional. Yes, of course. Yeah, so basically with the rapier I have more reach than the longsword, especially with a lunge. Like this, that's a lot of reach. So I can kind of stay back and every now and then poke. Which is uh, definitely appropriate against the longsword. Would not want to just face that head on. Come on, what? Hmm. Yep. It's like once the longsword gets close enough, you're kind of screwed. Unless you can grapple. Oh, nice. That's an effective one. Uh, yes. So it turns out only time I can beat you is uh, either you don't do anything or I use longsword against rapier. So one question I did have after watching your video on how the hand is always vulnerable mm -hmm. is why doesn't every sword have a basket hilt then? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think this is just one of those cases where you know, sometimes they just didn't come up with the idea before. I mean, basically with anything, anything along the technological development in history, you can always ask, why didn't they do this earlier? Well, they had to think of it first. They had to, mm. and because it, it is, you can see it's a gradual process. At first, they put rings on the, the straight cross guard to allow mm. you to put the finger on top. Then they, you know, added, gradually added more rings. You know, then rings turned into rapier, and you know, rapier led way to the, the basket hilt. So it's it's a very gradual kind of thing. In fact, you can even see that with Polish sabers, because early Polish sabers had a chain connecting the guard to the pommel. And then, you know, they made that a solid bar eventually. So it's a very gradual kind of thing. I'm assuming they didn't see the need for it before. Maybe they, they just thought, well, if you get your hand cut, you're unskilled or whatever. But eventually they just maybe just thought, okay, it's probably a good idea to have that extra safety of, of, a, of a better, protect, more protective hilt. Right. That's what I'm thinking. I guess it's the same thing as uh, what I was thinking about. Why didn't they always have muzzle brakes on right. guns? Yeah. Every gun nowadays has a muzzle break and you can basically negate all recoil and muzzle kick on any yeah. gun with a proper muzzle break. And mm -hmm. you think, oh, well, why didn't they just port the barrels on the top on the um, Henry lever action rifle, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, they just never thought of it. Yeah. Sometimes that's all it is. In hindsight, it seems obvious, but until then, it's also, of course, there is some... Um, if, if, if it's a type of sword that you normally use with a shield, you don't necessarily even think about it. It's like, well, the shield is there to protect your hand. Whereas later swords that are were designed to be used just you know, without anything, just empty offhand, makes a lot more sense. Mm. And for example, Viking swords definitely would not have needed a complex hilt because you have a large shield to work with. I also wonder how much his robe and the little weird tentacles he's got on his back would interfere with <laughs> fighting. Yeah. Oh, my scarf is fabulous, bitch. At first, I thought it was the sleeves that he slipped out of, but that's way too long for that. Mm -hmm. It's just a superhero cape.
Hmm. Yeah, cut to the arm with a rapier. That can be a fight ender, if done well. Like, how can you prefer medieval outfits over Renaissance? They're just objectively inferior. <laughs> That's my view, at least. Uh, I mean, medieval f uh, fashion was just utilitarian, and uh, yeah. Renaissance was flexing on people with clothing. <laughs> yeah, it's all a flex. <laughs> Not even uh, sweating here. That's right. Easy. Good, good, son. <laughs> on this one, it's a little bit more morbid how she turns to the corpses and like, yep, see that? <laughs> yeah. Hope you enjoyed the entertainment, folks. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th that's something that works really well. Whenever you time as they rush in and you caught, that's usually insta death. Hmm. Hmm. And that was just angle. All right. I think that's enough. I'm going to have plenty to edit anyway. So, um, yeah, I'll leave the link down below if you want to check out the game. And hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.